Hey there, everyone. I wanted to go ahead and introduce you to a new project. As you may have guessed by this opening clip, it is going to be all about lighting for African violets and gizneriads. These lights are provided by Jeff Young, who operates the Orchid Hobbyist. Um, he has the website orchidhobbyist.com, and these are the lights that combine normal 6500K LEDs with red LEDs that have far red spectrum. I'm just gonna go ahead and take some time here to explain what that means for these plants and we'll kind of go over these a bit. Jeff did actually provide me with these lights because he is using me um, as someone in the African violet world that can do kind of an unbiased review slash experimental procedure to see if these actually work well or better than um, traditional lights for African violets and gizneriads. I just want to talk a little bit about these lights and why they're unique to the growing world. A lot of times you'll see lights like this that are just plain white. You'll see on Amazon or wherever your favorite shopping store is four lights that they'll be rated at a Kelvin value generally. My particular lights that I'm growing under are 4000K. Um, and you can grow all the way up to 5,000. Some people grow up to 6,000, but generally speaking, they're a single color. But with these lights here, there is 65,000K lights in portions, and then they have the far red spectrum lights intermixed within. So the result is that these plants are getting a broader spectrum of light than the old school lights are giving. What does that mean for the plants? Well, plants utilize different spectrums of light in different manners. The far red spectrum is supposed to induce more blooming, and generally speaking, the bluer the light gets, which is on the opposite side of the light spectrum, is going to help produce chlorophyll. So these guys, really should um, hopefully do great things with African violets. I'm really excited for this experiment and we'll see where it goes from here. I do just want to disclose quickly here that these were provided to me free of charge by Jeff Young from the Orchid Hobbyist. These lights are known in the orchid world for doing great things with orchids, but this is an experiment with African violets because every plant really behaves differently under different spectrums of light. We're gonna see what results happen and good or bad, I'm gonna be reporting them to you and I'm going to be unbiased. If these do amazing, I'm gonna let you know. If they do horrible, I'll let you know. If they really don't have any effect on the plants, I'm going to let you know. So um, I have high hopes that these guys are going to show us good results but my theory is i think some plants are going to do better under these lights and some plants are probably going to exhibit the same behaviors under these lights as they do under the normal amazon lights that i have so um, that's just my little conjecture. I'm trying to follow a little bit of a scientific process with this because if you don't have a reason for doing an experiment to answer a question, there's really no reason to do the experiments in the first place, right? So um, that is the basis of what I'm going to go off of and we're going to try and answer that question. So. This is going to be the main group of African violets that I'm going to do the test with. Some of these have not been doing well under my current lights, so I wanted to try them under the lights with the far red spectrum. And some of these have been doing fairly well under my current set of lights, but they're just duplicates. So I want to do an apples to apples comparison and see what happens with the different lights so that we can compare the two after the duration of the test. So I'm just gonna go over 
the collection here and kind of show you a few of my problem plants and a few of the plants that I actually have the duplicates of. This guy here is Sassy Angel. It actually has another crown growing on the other side of the plant, so I'm going to be splitting that right after this video here, and that will be a good test for a duplicate. Currently, you can see that it's really growing quite well. The next one over is Rob Scrumptious. This one here always seems to have kind of a tight center in it, and the other thing is the leaves aren't growing quite as nicely as I'd like them to. The other thing I remember, because I have grown this on a windowsill before, is that it gets a really nice pink blush with a diamond dust texture on it, and I've never had that under just plain LED lights, so we're going to see where that goes from here. This is Tipped Honey. It's growing fairly well, as you can see, but the thing I don't like about it is that it has a semi-upright growth habit, and I want to see if the new lights are going to flatten it out. That's a little bit of the same issue I have with Queen Sabrina here. She's just not growing as tidy as I'd like her to under the current lights. And again with Jolly Fireball, it's an upright growth habit. And I have grown this under natural light before and it really does grow nice and flat in natural light. So I'm hoping that these new lights are going to reproduce more of the natural spectrum that it looks for so that we can have a nice growing rosette. Toy Castle right here is going to be split up. This is a leaf pot currently. It's going to be split up and I'm going to have two of these, one of them underneath the new grow lights and one of them underneath the current LEDs that I'm using. And again, this will be an apples to apples comparison. The same goes for Star Wars. Although I have not had good luck with this underneath my current grow lights. So We'll see how messy it grows underneath my current setup, and I'm hoping that we're going to see some cool results underneath the new grow lights. Psychedelic Show, I do have a duplicate of this that I'm going to have on an additional shelf. It's never grown well underneath my current setup, so we'll see where that goes. I have a duplicate of Scales. It's a small one, so we'll see how that grows. Currently, this one isn't growing as tidy as I'd like to see it grow, so... We'll see what the results are on that. NK Dashamoja. This is a seedling actually right now. This is its first blooming and it's really quite beautiful. But I have two of these and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. And lastly, we have Rob's Cool Fruit. This one has really spindly growth. I wanna see if the new lights are gonna tighten it up. I do not have a duplicate of this. So, um, we're just going to have to use this basis of a video to compare months down the road what these plants are going to be doing underneath the new lights on the ones that don't have duplicates. And lastly, just so you guys don't freak out, the next video that I do, um, I'm going to be repotting these. So you're going to see all the blooms taken off and there's going to be a hefty amount of leaves that are going to be taken off of these because these have been growing for the better part of six months in this mix or more. So it's time to go ahead and repot, break them down so that they can put on some fresh growth and that way we'll really see how well they do underneath these new grow lights. So we're going to go from there and the next time you see these guys they're going to be in their fresh soil and we're going to get started on this experiment. Thank you guys for watching this video. We're going to go ahead and give you updates, maybe monthly, because these plants do not grow super duper fast, but I think we'll maybe be able to see changes as the months progress. So we're going to visit you again, probably in December or late November, because it is actually October 31st right now. So. We will see you then. I'm hoping that we're going to have some definitive results by then. Not necessarily conclusive results, but maybe some changes that we're going to be able to see. So I will be uploading a second video going over the details of the differences in the plants. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.